Hello, so today I wanted to bring you a review in celebration of Black History Month. So this is a book I read a couple of months ago, The Essential Dick Gregory, and this is edited by his son, Christian Gregory. Now I must say this cover is beautiful. Let me see if I can give credit. So it says, I'm not sure. Jacket art by Charlie Palmer. The jacket designed by Stephen Brader, but I'm not sure if they're saying that is the person who did the cover. I'm, I imagine it is then. Yeah, I guess those two people together did the cover. But usually the nonfiction covers are a little bit stale. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tamika, and whether you stumbled upon Junkie for a Story or are here by intention, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, please give it a like and subscribe by the end of the video, and hit the bell for notifications so you won't miss new videos when they are released. And now, on to the video. But this one is just so beautiful. Let me just, there we go. Give you a better. Anyway, I can't. <laughs> Hopefully you get to see all the beauty. But uh, so it's three phases of Dick Gregory and it, it represents the content of this book pretty well because if you look at the three phases, it's showing him throughout different periods of his life. And that's how it goes in this book. It, <laughs> so this book is a collection of speeches, lectures, his stand-up routines, just a bunch of different collections where he spoke about current events and stuff like that. And it it happens to go in chronological order. So it, it reads like a autobiography because it is Dick Gregory himself. And he talks about his time um, living in poverty as a young boy. I think he, he comes from a large family and he was mostly raised by a single woman. He knew his father, but his father was in and out of his life, not really making the family a priority and wasn't, it didn't provide parental stability, we'll say. And yeah, that situation was very intense, that relationship between father and son, but also Dick Gregory's mother and the father of her children. That relationship was very tumultuous. So he goes into detail about that and because the his mother was raising a large family I think it was like the 50s and 60s I can't quite remember <laughs> but basically you know a single black woman raising a large family by herself obviously she struggled financially <laughs> So because of that, he, Dick Gregory, was malnourished for, sounds like, all of his life. And because he was malnourished to the point that he ended up in a special program. So he went to a special school, which I'm not sure that program still exists today, or maybe it's renamed something. I don't know. But it was some kind of program um, that he went to where the the school bus would pick him up and he would be taken to school. He talks about that. And then um, it seems like he knew very early on that he wanted to become a comedian. So he did go to college. I think, I think it was the University of Chicago. But he only went for about a year, whichever one out. If I'm wrong, I'll make the correction. But he only went for about a year and then he dropped out. Sounds like, you know, he was a young man with financial 
struggles <laughs> and maybe he just realized it wasn't for him. But he dropped out and then he just went into, he did some odds and ends jobs, but he also was working on his comedy and trying to perfect that so he can, you know, work in nightclubs, etc. And at that time when he was, this is probably early 20s and probably the 60s. I think it was the 60s. So there wasn't a lot of black comedians. And when I say comedians, I mean men. <laughs> because the women were non-existent, right? As far as black women. Um, but basically there wasn't, there, there were a few people he can sort of aspire to be. I think Red Fox was out at that time and I forgot, he did name some people, but mostly he was looking and studying white comics and their material, not to mimic them or copy their material, but basically to figure out what the audiences respond to best and what they like. So I would say this is great for people who are aspiring to become a comedian. He does talk in detail about that. He does go into detail about how he formulates his style of comedy. And I mean, I'm not interested in becoming a <laughs> comic, but I just found it interesting because I, I haven't read anybody's sort of way of concocting their style of comedy and he goes into it so well and detailed and he's very intelligent about how he chooses his comedy he talks about you know what would work on certain audiences certain you know age groups he, he talks about the demographics but as well as you know the di different um the di geography of comedy as well, because, you know, what works in New York might not work in Indiana and vice versa. So he's very keen on social status and his people skills, I would say, are pretty sharp. So I would recommend this to someone who is getting into comedy or considering it. It's not it's not pedantic in a way that would turn people off. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he's, he, he's the type of teacher who you would want to learn from. You know, he doesn't talk down to people. He just happens to give you information while entertaining you. So there's that. And then very early on when he reached stardom, so he reached stardom, it's, was at the Playboy, I forgot what it, was, what it was called, the Playboy Club, I think, that the late Hugh Hefner owned. So he did stand up for like six weeks at that club. And it was at that point when he really, his career skyrocketed. But at the same time, it was, <laughs> it was interesting because most people would take advantage of that and just you know, grab the money and fame <laughs> and keep it moving. But right at his peak is when he pivoted into political activism. And so he formed fr friendships with Medgar Evers and Malcolm X. A, a lot of people in that, you know, 60s era that familiar names basically and then you know he, he didn't just form relationships but he also was very active you know <laughs> and you know freedom of speech and equal rights he was at the forefront of you know many protests um he testified for congress and one incident that I remember, I, there is one chapter specifically that I remember was about a testimony. You know, it was about how the nightclubs and I think television 
was discriminating against black entertainers. So he testified to say to give his observations about the entertainment business um, and how it relates to black entertainers. And so he he put his celebrity on the line for to help lesser known entertainers and actors trying to come up in Hollywood. And he's just a commendable person. He's an all around stand up guy. I my parents, I'm surprised, did not ever mention Dick Gregory. So because we grew up, you know. Hearing about Richard Pryor, Red Fox, Eddie Murphy, you know. But my parents never told me about Dick Gregory. So I never heard of him until a couple of years ago. <laughs> but maybe because he had such a short stint. I don't know. But he's a funny guy. He's also an intelligent guy. And yeah, I would highly recommend this book. I also would recommend this book. If you are a mother with a young son, I think he gives some very good parental advice. But also it's like, I rarely read books that are speaking to young black men. And I feel like this book is, it offers good lessons for young black men to learn from. <laughs> and it's just, I really read books that are marketed to young black men. And not that this one is. I mean, I don't know. Rarely do I read a book that even, in my opinion, would appeal to you, to a young black man. But this book offers a lot of insight, a lot of social commentary, just his observations about current events are astounding. And the fact that it's, it's throughout the decades, 60s, 70s, 80s. I'm not sh I think it stops at the 80s, but it, I mean, because they do talk about his passing away and that was like 2016 or something, but he did slow down um, in his senior years. So it's mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And just to hear a black man's point of view about America, American society, is, it's good to hear. <laughs> because it, it's intelligent and thought-provoking. And yeah, I would highly recommend this. It's a short book. It's like... 200 and something pages. Let me just see here. It is 267 pages. So it's a quick read. It's worth your time. I would pick it up. And yeah, those are my thoughts on The Essential Dick Gregory. All right. Well, if you want more information about this book, I will leave a link in the description for the bookshop or some other <laughs> place that sells it. But I did happen to get this from my library and I'm so glad they had it. And it was on display. <laughs> but yeah, pick it up wherever books are sold. And those are my thoughts. So please like, comment, subscribe if you choose. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.